Calving is a vital time of the year for both beef and dairy farms to get right. As you've heard me say so many times before, it's all about prevention rather than running around dealing with disasters. That being said, even with the best of preparation, if you have enough cows, at some point you may need to intervene. And when we do intervene, we need to get it right. In this video, I'm going to very quickly explain a common mistake farm vets see all the time and how we can avoid it. Before the calf is born, while it's sat inside the cow, the calf lives within an organ called the uterus and within that it sits submerged within a fluid filled sac. This gives it a great level of protection. The calf doesn't have to breathe at this point because it's getting all of its oxygen through the umbilical cord up to its navel. Only when that umbilical cord is compressed and eventually broken does the breathing reflex start to kick in and that calf then starts to breathe. Since it's submerged, when the calf starts to emerge out of the cow, it's quite normal for there to be a small amount of that fluid in and around the nose and mouth. If for whatever reason the birth process is delayed or prolonged, it can be the case that that calf can inhale a reasonable amount of that fluid. That's pretty problematic because as the calf is born and it's working hard to take its first breaths, the presence of that gunk within the airways can make the difference between a live calf and a dead calf. Of course, most farmers know this and they normally try and do something about that. Sometimes it's sticking some straw up its nose to stimulate a cough. Sometimes it's dousing the calf in cold water to get it going. And sometimes it's this, hanging the calf upside down, often over a gate. And you can see the logic. Here, gravity should help that gunge, that goo, to emerge out of the calf's airways onto the ground. Calf can then breathe again. And very often, as if to vindicate us, we see a good pile of this stuff coming out of the calf's mouth. But all is not as it seems. Doing this, although it's very well-meaning and very commonplace, actually can make things harder for the calf. And that's because if you imagine where are most of the calf's organs, the heaviest ones, they are in the abdomen, not the thorax. All of those organs, the stomach, the guts, the bladder, are now sat on top of the calf's diaphragm. That makes it much more difficult for that calf then to expand its thorax, its chest, and get air into its airways and lungs. So gravity is actually working against us. But what about all that fluid we so often see coming from that calf's mouth? Do we not need to clear that from the calf's airways? Well, actually, the vast majority of that fluid is coming from its stomach. So it's coming via its esophagus, not its windpipe. That fluid has never been in the lungs. It's not impeding that calf's breathing. And actually that fluid can be pretty important for the early hydration and nutrition of that calf. That fluid is better off in than out. So can we do anything to clear the fluid off of the calf's lungs? The good news is that the answer is yes, there's lots of things we can do. Here are some of the suggestions you'll find from your vet, from me, from reputable online resources. We're going to cover some of these better recommendations in a technical video all of their own. If you don't want to miss that video, don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up if you found this useful and leave me a comment. Have you hung calves over gates before? Has anyone else told you not to do it or is that just me? See you for the next one and if you're heading into a carving, good luck.